imaginary bar line homework page 37. So the example is showing um, a bass line that is written incorrectly. It sounds fine. So it sounds fine. We want it to still sound that way, but we uh, it's been written incorrectly because it violates the imaginary bar line. It makes it harder to read. Remember the imaginary bar line is a place uh, right between the and of two and the downbeat of three. It's um, a place in the measure where we want to be able to see the beginning of beat three. Even if beat three is tied into, we want to see a separate symbol that represents the beginning of beat three. So one method to determine uh, what's incorrect is to apply dots for every eighth note of, of uh, note value. And then when you've done that, you go through and count to four. One, two, three, four. And you draw a line to divide the fourth dot from the fifth dot like so. I'll zoom in there. And that tells you that because one, two, three, four, after the fourth dot, you're drawing a line, your line is going through a duration. That means that this note needs to be split up. It needs to still sound for a whole beat, but it needs to be split up into two symbols, which are tied together. So um, two eighth notes equals a quarter note, so you need to rewrite this note as two eighth notes, tied over so that we can see the invisible bar line and then you have to adjust your beaming according, according to beaming rules which is that you never beam across beat 3 either. So you can tie across beat 3 never beam across beat 3. So let's take a look at that. There's my quarter note that's unchanged. There's my eighth note that's unchanged. However, I need to divide this into two eighth notes with a tie. So that means I have to write a separate eighth note, which means it can be beamed to the previous eighth note because we're not beaming across beat three there. This tie takes care of my duration. Then there's my other eighth note, keep that the same, and then this quarter note, there's nothing wrong with it. So then we've got the, the correct measure. So um, it still sounds the same, but it's written correctly. And we can hit listen to it and you'll hear there they sound exactly the same. There's no uh, flam because one note is different from another. That's what we want. This is correctly written. This is incorrectly written. Using the dot method, you can always find the place where the invisible bar line has been messed up. Moving down the page, um, here's a problem. Let's take a look at our second measure here. We have, um, we need to apply our dots. So let's do that. So here we have assigned our dots, single dot, uncircled, circle dot, eighth note, eighth note, quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, and then counted to four, one, two, three, four, drew our line in the middle. So we need to adjust that. So you could pause the video at this point and try to rewrite that correctly and then check your answers when you restart the video. And here we are to check our answers. And this is the correct solution right here. Eighth note, rest unchanged. Eighth note, unchanged in terms of value. But when we get this other eighth note that's the result of splitting up that symbol, we can now beam these three together. Because you beam adjacent eighth notes together when they're on one or the other side of beat three. So you notice we beam right up through the end of two, but then we don't beam into beat three. You never want to do that. That's one of the ways we preserve the invisible bar line. And then we have our other eighth note that we got from uh, splitting up that note. We get this other eighth note too, and then that's tied to the previous eighth note to give us the full duration of the quarter note. And then we have this eighth note and this quarter note unchanged. And again, they sound exactly the same. <laughs>